Hi there, my name is Zoe. I teach art at Reading Senior High School and I'm back to make some more art with you. My projects that I'm doing are just low key, let's keep busy during this time that we are, you know, social distancing. Yesterday we did a cardboard color graph where we used um, old cereal boxes, old snack boxes, crackers, whatever you might have in your kitchen that you would normally recycle, hopefully recycle. We took them apart and we made a building city some of you had little kids. I got pictures from lots of my friends from their little, you know, two, three, four year olds that made these and they just did simple shapes, triangles, squares, rectangles, whatever. And they turned out really, really adorable. Uh, so yeah, we did a little texture rubbing yesterday with a piece of paper and we made some prints of our city. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this into a metal tooling project. So we're gonna take it to another level. So you need your cardboard piece for this. And what you're going to do is you're gonna use some aluminum foil. I apologize if this is very loud. This is regular kitchen foil. And what we're gonna be doing is we are going to be wrapping our city in this and we're going to be pressing it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my, my city and I'm gonna lay it on the foil. And this is where I might need a pair of like scissors and I'm just gonna cut the foil a little bit larger so there's probably about a one inch two inch overlap around my piece I don't know if there's a difference in quality of foil I have heavy-duty uh, thinner cheaper maybe Dollar Tree foil might even work better because it'll press into all those nooks and crannies I'm gonna take this extra and just put it to the side so here's what I have. Just have a little bit of overlap. My city is backwards right now. And I'm simply going to press this down with my hands and I'm gonna wrap the foil around the edges. And I'm making sure that I use my hands to press really well so that I have you know, a good wrap. I'm gonna use my scissors and just trim this a little bit so I can wrap it. One of my buildings went over the edge. So this is what the back looks like right now. See, my, my foil's just wrapped, okay? And the front, not so interesting. But I'm gonna start taking my hands. This is gonna be really good for kids uh, who like texture or, you know, need to work on some hand-eye coordination. It's very tactile. So what I'm doing is I am simply pressing so that you can start seeing my, my houses through there, my windows, all my little city detail. Another thing you can do is use the back end, like the eraser end of a pencil and just go around your shapes. I know... Miss Skiana son made some trains and some boats with his cardboard so he can use those now and make them into a second piece of art. So once I have this all wrapped and pressed, this might take you a little bit of time. I'm gonna use both my hands and my pencil. The pencil really helps get in around all the sides. So this is called metal tooling. You can look this up. Look it up on Google and click images. Metal tooling has a South American history. Uh, they would use a metal that was thin enough to cut with scissors and they would press not only from the front but they would press from the back and make items kind of pop out and be convex, which is opposite of concave. So here's my city. I have all my little window details pressed. I could be done. This could be a finished piece. But if I wanna go even further, I can use markers. I found that Crayola or like regular water-based markers doesn't work very well. It rubs right off. Even letting it sit overnight, the pigment doesn't dry to the foil. So I don't recommend using a washable marker. If you have some Sharpies, like some permanent markers, these are gonna work really, really well. 
And just like yesterday on the texture rubbing prints that we made, you could go back in and add details. Same idea, except this is gonna be directly on the aluminum foil. And I'm just gonna fill in some areas with my permanent marker. Now, if you are living in the moment of being inside and having fun while we are on our little, you know, seclusion, staycation, whatever you wanna call it, and you wanna get a little bit messy, you can use some tempera paint, some Crayola tempera paint if you have this laying around. If not, stick with the markers. If you don't have any of this, just leave it as is with the metal tooling. Uh, this is a water-based tempera paint, not acrylic. You could use acrylic if you have it for some of the older kids. This is just, you know, wash right off. Lay some newspapers down, a little tablecloth, put a little apron or smock on your art maker if you have a little, little person. And I love, 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 love saving lids, plastic lids. This is probably from Chinese takeout. Uh, these are great palettes. These are a great space to place your paints on because it's washable and you can reuse it and the paint doesn't soak in. You could also use like a scrap of magazine if you wanted. So I just like put some green paint out there and I could paint directly on the aluminum foil. Let me lift this up so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna try and paint upside down. But yeah, so you could add color this way too. Paint this window over here green. I do have my green on today for our Reading School District Spirit Day that we have going on. I believe tomorrow is Superhero Day. So I am decked out in my St. Patty's green. My second video is definitely going to be about Ireland because you know I do love, I love me some Ireland. So here we are, just painting, painting, painting. I could use whatever colors I want. So that is permanent marker versus a washable temper paint. You could do a combination. You could do none of, none of it at all. Totally up to you. You are the art maker, so you get to choose how you finish your piece. I do have my piece here that I did. This is solely permanent marker. See that? Nice little piece. If you wanted to secure the back end with a little white glue, you could, not necessary, but you could. If you really wanna make sure it's not going anywhere. So there's your piece. Oh, I did wanna show you some little holographs that I made yesterday. These were some little texture plates that I made that are probably more on the level of a elementary student because they are just, you know, I just did shapes. But you can see the size difference in case you want it to keep going with the color cardboard color graphs. So yeah, thank you so much for tuning in to our little metal tooling project. Again, I'm gonna have a second video up today and it's going to focus on Ireland and some fantasy art. Yeah, so thank you very much. Again, my name is Zoe Dehart, Miss Dehart, uh, whatever. And keep on making.